You can see both Doug and uh, Fergie in the front are both completely set up with their gloves. They've got their helmets. They've already done that pressure check I was talking to you about where they fill up the suit uh, completely and, and get that all done. You can see Sandy back there is doing her final adjustment. She's getting her microphones, her booms. They come off the comm cap all set there. Uh, Randy's kind of going up above her now. Once Drew gets done, Drew's responsible for making sure all the connections are good. Uh, once he's done, like I said, everything gets double-checked. Then Randy will come by after him. He'll check all those connections, and then he'll ask the astronaut. So he's talking to Sandy right now. He'll be asking her to check all her connections. You know, show me where your harness connection is. Show me where your uh, bladder connections are for your, uh, your uh, lumbar support. Uh, the bladder for the lumbar support. Show me where your green apple is. The green apple is the emergency oxygen that they fly with. And so on their right hip, we've seen it a couple times with Doug, uh, you can see um, a green apple there, as we call it. If you pull that out, then you get an emergency supply of oxygen that goes into your suit. So um, Randy is busy talking with Sandy and making sure she can feel all those connections are all set for her. She's all set, and he's doing that. MS-1, this is OTC. I got you loud and clear. How me. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning. Kind of see that first communication check for Sandy is done with the helmet open, just to check that only the comm system. Now we're going to. This is NTD, and I have you loud and clear. Good morning, Sandy. And good morning. I have you loud and clear as well. Houston, MS-1, comm check. MS-1, Houston, we read you loud and clear, Sandy. Good morning. And good morning to everyone there in Houston. I have you loud and clear as well. As I was saying, we do the first comm check with the visor open, so it's just to check of the communication system. After that, uh, we'll go ahead and close the visor and make sure the communications work with the visor down, that nothing gets upset by there. There's no comm cable that's stuck in the visor or anything like that. So we do a comm check with NTD and then with Houston with the visor down. Sandy's currently right now pumping up her suit. There's actually suit controls that Randy makes sure that she can reach, and you can pump up your suit like we're talking about for the comfort. And once that's all done, then they can do whatever they, whatever they want to do. I can verify step 684. Copy. You can see it's really tight quarters in there now. Randy's kind of working in between Sandy and Rex's head while Drew's still hanging over Rex and getting him all set. So it's very difficult. You'll see Randy has to go above Rex's head to get out of there. It's a very difficult and tight quarters to be able to do that. This is SCP. Yeah, based on your description. For Fergie and Doug, they're both completely strapped in. They're doing well. They're actually talking with each other. You can kind of see making sure their checklists are all set. Pilot and Commander are a very close-knit team getting everything done with their mission specialist number two. So they're making sure all their checklists are all set to go, all their gear is in the right place. Everything's all good to go for launch. I copy. What's it like in the crew compartment once you get inside nine minutes, particularly five minutes? Well, really, once you get inside nine minutes, you're just hoping everything's going well. You're hoping you get the go for launch. Weather's all good. Uh, that there's no uh, airspace incursions, we've had, which we've had a few times. You're looking to see what's going on, and really, you're in your checklist at that point. You're watching all the systems come up. You're making sure everything's pressurizing correctly, and and really, you're the the 50 second redundant check to everybody on the ground, both here at the launch control center and mission control center. They're looking at the same data you are, but obviously, you're going to do it again because uh, you're the crew that's on on the vehicle, and so they're looking at all their gauges and going through their checklist inside nine minutes. There's a lot of checklist items you have to do, including probably the most major one is at five minutes. The pilot will start up the uh, auxiliary power units, the APUs. So there's a lot of stuff happening inside nine minutes. There's comm checks going on, final briefings to make sure that if there's any changes to the winds or weather uh, at KSC, if they have to come back and land here or anywhere else. Um, you're going through your checklist. You've got all the displays for the different systems, and you're usually paging through those displays one at, one at a time, just checking to make sure that everything's nominal and good to go and, and making sure that it all looks good to you.
Got a great shot of Doug here over on the right. He's looking over pretty much directly at the camera. What he's actually looking at is he's got a checklist over there that he's taking a look at. And he's talking with uh, Fergie right now on the intercom. So we can't hear the intercom, but that's what he's talking about. A lot of times when it comes time to go, Randy probably can't reach that, that uh, camera because he'd be like uh, crawling all over Sandy's head. So a lot of times the pilot will actually reach over and give that camera. He'll actually take it off the wall and hand it back to Randy. So it's kind of a handoff between the two of them. But this camera system is great. It came in about 10, 15 years ago. It was added, which I think has been great for people to understand what goes on in the cockpit. It seems like it would be an easy thing to do, just like an airliner hop on, sit down, and get ready to go. But it's really a very intricate ballet, making everything work. And the dedicated professionals on, on the closeout crew team, you heard all these guys are like 15 years, 28 years, 30 years. Uh, we've got three number ones that are actually working the number one, four, and five today. So a huge amount of experience, huge amount of talent. Uh, I worked with this crew extensively for about three, four years, and they are one of the most professional and dedicated group of individuals I've ever had the, the pleasure to work with in my entire career. They know what they're doing. They do it well. They take a tremendous pride in their job, and it's, uh, it's kind of sad to see them doing this for the last time. I know they've all been around for a long time, and they're trying to make this the best one ever and get this crew off safe and sound. And uh, my hat's off to every member of the closeout crew now and, and the, the history of the shuttle from the very beginning. Uh, they're the ones that take care of the astronauts right before they leave the planet Earth and make sure everything's perfect for them right as they go out the door. So uh, my hat's off to Travis and his whole team today and all the other ones that came before him. Talking about the cameras that were added, one of the, the uh, cameras that, that we get the most comments on that people really watch for now is that pilot's point of view camera as you're coming around the heading alignment circle. Everybody wants to see the uh, shuttle lined up with the runway turning final. It's it's so impressive. Yeah, it's always cool to see it from their perspective or like this, you know, seeing what's going on. It's nice. And we've tried to do that more and more is give the public more of a view of exactly what's going on. Space is not easy. There's nothing easy about going into space, staying in space, working in space, coming home from space. It's all very, very difficult and requires a huge amount of uh, drive and 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 thousands and thousands of professionals down here on the ground. We see the guys in orange now or blue flight suits and and oftentimes they're the focus, but really the focus is, should be on the folks like the closeout crew team or all the folks that are in front of us here in the launch control center. Back in the mission control center in Houston, I worked there all the time. Uh, Butch and MCC, the asset entry, uh, um, Capcom back there and, and uh, the flight directors and and flight control team members there and everybody trying to make this work and, and get it all good. But it's always great to see that point of view of what's happening, the pointing into the spear. And that is one of the neatest things is being able to get that HUD camera view coming around. And boy, you see that runway come in sight and it's a really good